Yo, what it do you guys and welcome to a Destiny 2 build video and we're just going to get straight into it today. We're going to be looking at Starfire and as you may go to see by the title, is Starfire better in 2023 right now? Is it better in Lightfall than it was in Witch Queen? And short answer, yes. Long answer, let's go ahead and dive in. First things first, let's go and explain how Starfire works for anybody out there who has not done it and then we're going to go and get to how Starfire is indirectly better now because it actually is okay so anyways it's going to start with starfire first things first this is called starfire protocol starfire protocol real quickly at the end of the day at the end of the day fusion grenades will have an additional charge and recharge from from empowered weapon damage okay fusion grenades also uh, fusion grenade kills also grant rift energy right Keep this in mind, okay? Main thing is you get double charges and you're gonna go ahead and get recharges from empowered weapon damage. Now, you are gonna end up pairing that with the likes of Well of Radiance, which is empowered weapon damage, and Empowering Rift, which is also empowered weapon damage, okay? So in order to go make the most out of this, you basically want these two things here. Now, if you don't really want this one as much, because there are some times where I prefer just healing Rift, you can always go and do that. But otherwise, this is, where, how, you, this is how you're gonna get the most out of this build, right? Now, fusion grenades, as was mentioned earlier, this is what you're gonna be pairing with your exotic of Starfire Protocol. And then you're gonna be pairing Touch of Flame Solar Aspect with it. Why? At the very bottom, put simply, it explodes twice. You throw one grenade, it does one explosion, two explosion, you throw another grenade, it does three explosion, four explosion. You get the idea? It's doing four lots of explosions within two grenades. Not too bad, right? Now, when we go ahead and take all of that into account, we just need to go and figure out, okay, um, how is this working? How do you see a rotation of it? Hopefully up on the screen now, I'll go and show you just a very quick rotation of how this build will go and work. If I don't do it now, I'll do it in a minute, forgive me. Uh, but right now, what you wanna go and do, step one, cast a well, okay? Pretty simple to understand. Now that you cast your well or you cast an empowering rift, what you wanna go and do is you wanna go and take this uh, uh, this um, grenade launcher here, it's called Wither Hordes. Now Wither Horde is essentially gonna go ahead and do damage over time. So instead of you shooting multiple times with like a submachine gun, for example, this is just going to keep ticking damage until it times out, right? So good thing about Wither Horde is that the catalyst of Wither Hordes, when applied um, on here, oh, I don't know if it shows me, yeah, increases handling, holstering this weapon, automatically reloads it. It's basically got an auto reload perk on it. So you go and shoot it, you put it away and you shoot with other things. So I'm getting damage from this when it's on the target. I'm also getting damage from this as I'm shooting it. Really good. Lots of damage coming back, which basically means I'm getting my grenade energy back quite often. Really, really fast ways of getting grenades. You could just basically keep throwing grenades so long as you're in a rift or so long as you're in a well. From there onwards, you can pair it with a with a rocket launcher, uh, even the grenade launcher, as long as it basically has demolitionist. And as for the other perk, um, it's up to you. But ideally, uh, chill clip is you don't. Oh God, how do I explain this? A chill clip is more for like raid teams, if you will. It's to do with Galahorn's wolf pack rounds, but I'm not going to go into it too much. Forgive me. Uh, to keep it simple, things like Vorpal, Frenzy, those will do. Okay, if you want to run that, that's okay. Otherwise, Demolish. Why Demolitionist? Because activating your grenade ability reloads this weapon from its reserves. So instead of me reloading this gun, the way that it work is I'd cast a well, I'd shoot my Wither Hordes, I'd switch to my rocket, I'd shoot my rocket, I'd throw the grenades, I'd shoot my rocket again. And then from there onwards, it's up to you how you want to go and do this. If you're playing solo, you can go ahead and shoot another Wither Horde on the ground. You can have one Wither Horde applied to the to the uh, body of a boss. So if there's one ticking on the boss, that's just one. And you can put one on the ground as well. And both of these will do two separate amounts of ticking. This also applies for an entire raid team, which is why sometimes if you have more than two Wither Hordes in your raid team, you want to go ahead and not do that basically this is where anarchy comes involved um, and you can use anarchy which is a power weapon as well i don't have it on me it's in my dim at the minute anyways i'm digressing so that's kind of how the weapons work there the reason why i have Callus mini tool is because a it's got incandescent which actually goes really well with my fragments over here fragments are just scorch stacks lots of different scorch stacks lots of different ignitions ember of ashes more scorch stacks which is great more scorch stacks is going to go and equal to more hopefully ignitions uh, to put this easier scorch is dot ignition is kaboom okay there's an easier way of understanding it so uh ember of eruption this is a bigger kaboom <laughs> okay um, 
uh, ability recharges faster when you're scorching, which works great because my entire build is about grenades and class uh, ability energy. So this works really well together. And since my uh, these can also go ahead and scorch, you kind of get the idea. And then over there, your ignitions will also spread scorch. So I go ahead and scorch one person. I build up enough stacks of scorch on him. He goes kaboom. As he goes kaboom, this person over here gets affected by the kaboom and then he starts burning as well. And then I put my focus on him and you get the idea. That's more for ad clearing. It's not as much utilized on bosses, but you can still get the scorch stacks built into ignitions for bosses and then use that ignition as like a quick way of getting damage return. So it still goes ahead and works. Now, now we're going to look into how 2023 has changed from 2022. Put simply, in 2022 Witch Queen, you would run Elemental Wells. You remember that Elemental Ordnance, Explosive Well Maker, whatever else it may be. And then you might go and use like Converting and then like things like Firepower, stuff like that. You get the idea, right? Well, you're not doing that anymore. Okay, instead you're running Orbs of Power and you're going to be running Armor Charges. And I'm going to explain how that works, okay? So, but before we do that, let's go and look, have a little look at these mods. First things first, the Helmet. The Helmet is relatively the same for what it's worth. Uh, ashes to Asses, Ashes to Asses, Ashes to Assets uh, is a really good way for you to go and get your super energy back on grenade kills. Big pack of enemies over there, throw a grenade, blow them up, and you get more super return on killing them like that. Not bad, right? These do stack with each other, okay? They do have diminishing returns, but I just don't see any downfall to actually running these on each other because there's not as many other things I can run in here. I will go and explain what else you can go and run for the most part. Other things that you can go ahead and run, forgive my notes, it might be a bit scrappy for some, and you can always go and print screen this and pause it if you guys want to on the video. If it helps you guys out, you're more than welcome to. Um, so Ashes Assets, I think is the better thing in there. Uh, Radiant Light also works really well. But again, this isn't so much for this class. Radiant Light is more for like your friends, if you will. So if you're inside a raid team, Radiant Light is good for raid teams. But I actually want my team to give me Radiant Light, not for me to give my team Radiant Light. And I'll kind of explain that in a, in a moment because I'm looking to DPS myself. Ideally, though, that's being selfish. I should go and put this on. which should be a bit selfish. Um, and then I got a harmonic siphon, which you're also going to see in here. Harmonic or solar siphons. The difference between harmonic siphon, for anyone who doesn't know, and the difference between things like solar siphon is because harmonic siphon will always go ahead and uh, if you see, let me show you here, like harmonic resistance. You see how it says there solar damage resistance, right? If I switch over to stasis, see how it now says stasis resistance right? Or if I go ahead and switch over to arc, it now says arc resistance. It basically, it flexes with me. So you can always go ahead and run the harmonic because it will always harmonize with your armor whenever you switch subclass. Really good quality of life if you find yourself switching subclasses or if you're not doing as many loadouts, but we'll kind of go over those in a minute, okay? So that's basically what I'm running. Over here, I'm running harmonic siphon. I go ahead and kill enemies with my callus mini tool and I get orbs power easier to understand. Now, in endgame, that's a little bit harder to go and do because primary weapons aren't as um, influential, but you're still going to need them anyways because you need to do damage, all right? So it's still going to do. So that's one way to generate orbs of power. Remember that. Second way, we go in towards this, and this is also going to generate orbs of power by basically using my grenades. So not only are my grenades also going to have a chance of generating orbs of power, but they're also going give, to give me super energy as well. And they're also going to give me class ability energy as well when I go and go into fragments. There's quite a few different fragments you can go and pair in here as well, by the way. You can go and throw in things like Ember of Blister in. See that? Defeating with solo ignitions also grants grenade energy. There's a few different ways you can go and get grenade in class and stuff like that, whatever. You get the idea. So this is good, but not so much on bosses, but more in ads. This is good on bosses and on ads. To understand it simply, if a grenade normally does this, this is going to make the grenade do this. Okay, the arc on the grenade is a bit nicer and a bit more lenient, which means if you stand further back, you can throw them without having to aim a lot higher. Um, it's up to you. It's just a good quality of life. And in my opinion, I feel like this is a better quality of life than what some other things I've got in here. So I'm running these two as my main things. And then I'm running Harmonic Loader. Right, Harmonic Loader basically increases the reload speed of my solar weapons, my Callus Mini Saw here. Or I can run other things like BXR as well. And keep in mind, I've also got Incandescence on those, which also help with my Scorch stacks, which also help with my build and ignitions, right? So it's just good quality of life at AdClear. Again, works a lot better at lower levels. At higher levels, it's a little bit harder, but it still works, all right? Now, what else could you go and run in here? Well, I've gone ahead and made some notes here real quickly. Um, so firepower, the main thing. Fastball is also really good. Bolstering, class ability energy regen on grenade damage, which could also go ahead and be thrown in here, which is this bad boy right there. Feel free to pause if you need to go and read it or have a little look on your own screen. 
impact induction. This is to do more so with your melee. Um, you don't really have to go and run this, to be honest, in my opinion. It just gives your melee a little bit of action. Right now, your melee is kind of out of this build and you don't really utilize it as much. It's good for the Scorch stacks, and that's mostly about it, at least for me right now. From there onwards, you've got Harmonic Loader and that's the one that I'm running because again, I'm going to be using my primary an awful lot, so I wouldn't mind a bit of utility. Now, you might be asking, Grenade Kickstar. Why are you not running Grenade Kickstar? Now, I've done... I say like the numbers on this and I've tried to go over it as quick as I possibly could. A TLDR, let's say hypothetically, I can show you some screenshots if you need me to, but let's say hypothetically, uh, right here, right now, this does around 20% 20, 20 regeneration coming back, right? So that would look something like this. You see the little white bar? So this is the bottom being refilled in. I hope you guys can see it. Sorry, it's not the best right now. So it's filling up about that much. Let's just say that's about 20%. I'd say that's around 20%. If not, it's less, it might be 15%, right? If you was to completely stack it out, right, with charges and everything, let's say that you was to go ahead and say, look, I'm going to throw three grenade kickstarts in here. And what's that? They scale on armor charges? Oh, well, that's awesome. But let's go ahead and throw this on here and let's go ahead and put as many armor charges as we possibly can on here. And then let's go ahead and throw one grenade. Yeah, but once you throw one grenade, it consumes all of those charges. So it's only one grenade that you're basically scaling back up there, at least with the armor charges. That This is roughly how it would look. It's not that much difference in my opinion. And again, that's mostly just on one. So, I mean, for what it's worth, it's about an extra, I would say it's hundred percent, but it's still not enough for what it's worth. There is a reason for this though, because I'm about to go into where the, where the build actually is indirectly buffed. And uh, this is why we don't really want to go ahead and do uh, grenade kickstart. I think it's fine in general content. If you're just looking to kind of throw your grenades and clear ads and whatever, go for it. But you'll see why in a second. Sorry, forgive me that it takes a bit of time to go and get there. So we're going to go on to the Starfire Protocol. And what do I have on it? I just got resistance. I got solar. I got arc. We're looking good. I don't have runs stasis reserves. Now, this is where it gets interesting, okay? This is where it gets interesting. It's the legs. I'm gonna go ahead and give you an analogy. And if you understand this, this is great. Back in 2022, if you ran something called Supreme Wellmaker, you might know where I'm going with this now. If you ran something with Supreme Wellmaker, you would essentially go ahead and let's say that you was running well, you would cast your well, you would put Supreme Wellmaker on you. When you cast your well, three orbs of power drop on the ground. But not just three orbs of power, but three stasis shards also drop around you. Now, you would have something called Font of Might. And Font of Might would basically go ahead and increase your subclass da weapon damage to the subclass that you're currently running. But because they're stasis shards that you're generating, it basically only works with stasis. But this was wonderful on guns like Bump in the Night. This was wonderful on stuff like that. But it would require me to do this. Well, if I do this, I can't do this. This is where it's interesting. You no longer have to do that. We've got a bit of a weaker version and I'll try and show you how, how this works with the numbers. We now actually have weapon surges. Weapon surges are gonna work as follows. Let's go and do this. Armor charges. What is an armor charge? How does an armor charge work? Right. It converts an orb of power, so those balls that you see on the grounds, to an armor charge, but it requires a mod to do so. Now, um, if you was to go and run something like this, this would actually give you an armor charge. It mine is bugged. Go look at yours, and at the very, very top, it will tell you it will look like this. See that one? Collecting an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. My one's bugged right now, okay? But the idea is that that would consume your stacks. We don't want to consume your stacks. This, however, will also give you collecting an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge, right? Remember that, okay? We've now got armor charge. You can hold up to three armor charges base. If you put the chest mod charged up on your chest, this one here, you can increase that base capacity by one for each one of these mods you run, which means I can run, if that costs three, and I have 10 here, I'd have to remove all of this, but I could have three of those, which means I can get six. I can have three base plus three of these. So that's six, right? You guys with me so far, hopefully, right? So you get maximum six total charges. You can refresh and add charges by picking up more orbs of power. You don't understand that, let me explain it. Let's say you have, um, let's say that, so the example would be more so here, but let's say that you have five orbs of power, right? And every orb of power starts with 10 seconds. 
when that orb of power goes to one second, zero seconds, you will now have four orbs of power. Get the idea? Three, two, one, three orbs of power. Three, two, one, two orbs. You get the idea? They're basically scaling down. As long as you don't consume them, they're still there. Right. Hopefully you understand that. So you can refresh them and so forth. So basically, if you picked up an orb of power last second, it's about three, two, one, and you pick up a new orb of power, you'll essentially refresh it back to the 10 seconds. If that's the 10 seconds that you have. However, time dilation scales it. So if you go ahead and put down here time dilation, it actually adds onto it with diminishing returns. A lot of diminishing returns with these new mods, by the way. It starts off base, but if you put one of time elemental, I was about to say elemental, it's not elemental time dilation, it's time dilation. If you put one time dilation on your build, you will scale it to 15 seconds. If you put two time dilations on your build, you put it to 18 seconds. And if you put three, you put it to 20 seconds. However, keep in mind this stacks so for every say so each stack of orb of power without being consumed adds more to the overall time duration here's your example if i had three armor charges so i've picked up three orbs of power i have three armor charges but i have two time dilations so two is here i would have a total of three times 18 18 36 i think 54 right so now i've got 54 seconds of elemental uh, not elemental but I've got, 50, I've got 54 seconds of time dilation on my armor charges now i just don't want to consume them because this can provide long damage buffs when paired we're paired with uh, leg mods like surges this is where the damage came in yeah you've basically got supreme well maker but on anything you, you're like what do you mean by that what do i mean by that you can have it on solar, you can have it on stasis, you can have it on strand if you wanted to, you can have it on void. It's it's out there. Elemental uh, Supreme Wellmaker has legitimately just kind of freed itself. Is it as strong as Supreme Wellmaker? The the font of my Supreme Wellmaker combination. Is it as strong as that? No, it's not. It's not as strong as that. As you can read what it says up here, your stasis weapons gain a small bonus to damage but basically it's still a bonus to damage now i ran into a few areas and i had a little uh shot uh, at a few different bosses here and these were kind of some of the numbers that i was generating you can always go out there and test it yourself ideally just do not make sure that you're running this on so take this off and if you want to copy this you can go shoot it yourself uh, i ran on uh nessus over here uh, I ran with in the cistern. I went in towards the conflux and you can go and shoot the Kabul boss uh, in the lost sector. Clear all of the ads and then shoot the boss. Try and hit him in your chest if you can so you don't get like any kind of multipliers or anything else like that. And make sure you don't have any buffs on your left hand side. Shoot him. And the numbers that I was getting uh, were around 66,000. Uh, but then once I uh, once I went ahead and I popped on, we, we are, <laughs> well, we don't actually know if this is entirely accurate, by the way, because this was the, the weird test one. This one and this one's more important. Important, but I'm going to tell you what I did anyways um, and then we went ahead and shot him again but with the stasis so I picked up an orb of power I had the stasis surge I shot him again it was 110,000 the idea is I do 66,000 and I multiply it by 0. Point whatever percentage until I can find it it seemed to be a 65% DPS increase whether it was just on that boss alone I've got no idea but either way it was a DPS increase it seemed a little bit inconsistent though forgive me again I'm kind of wondering whether or not I had the uh, nightmare uh, thing there's like a what is it there's like a nightmare buff that you can get if you know why if you know why i know you know why i know but if you don't don't worry it's okay i'll just move on anyways uh, this seemed a little bit wild i was like that's a, that's insane that that's way better than font of might font of might was a 25 percent damage increase that can't be correct so that's why i think it's wrong however i did two other ones i shot a knight i know it's not a boss and there's no but i shot a knight and i shot it with and without it um that was with without it that was with the stasis surge um on the on the weapon and the difference between it was that which is the difference of 10 percent. and then this one was on this uh lost sector over here the ori um or or whatever it's called and then i also shot the the vex inside again i made sure that i only had uh well i didn't have the buff on the first shot it was two rockets so 66 000 plus 20 and then you yeah, the idea so again 12 percent. so i can't exactly run and crunch the exact numbers on this forgive me i've been just coming off a 14 hour stream i'm exhausted can you tell can you tell all right but my point is indirectly the overall build got buffed 
now instead of you running within your like raid groups instead of you being like oh my goodness remember fun of mine what i would go and do is i would run a weapon called fire and forget um this is my dim right now so fire and forget goodness, this is pretty well i'd run a weapon called fire and forget and with like focus fury and fill prep uh, why wouldn't i run this as much anymore because linear's got nerfed by 15 percent, but it still could be good but it won't be as good as what it used to be i'd run this but i'd run this with um a stasis uh osmiomancy kind of build on here so i've been running my osmiomancy i'll be switching over here and then i would take things like font of might and when someone in my team would cast a well i would go and get font of might from their supreme well maker from the well and then i would get a damage increase and i would go and use the the thing right basically tldr you don't have to do that as much instead you can basically just go and get it this way now i don't know if i covered other mods i think i didn't on the uh artifacts um, this is my second time recording this and forgive me um but the uh ascendant uh scepter for season 20 that we're in right now so if you watch this video a little bit later than season 20 forgive me um, but this is currently what we're in um you want to go and take the solar uh, perk here which reduces the cost of your uh, mods uh up here or like any of your solar mods um that you want to be applying so things like um it should be things like that for example that should be like uh, costing less and then also uh, you could be running the grenade one hence why my ashes the assets um i can squeeze these in without them costing too much all right in the future they might cost a bit more they'll cost three each but right now they cost one each all right and from there onwards this is also good as well prismatic transfer i haven't obviously as you say i haven't unlocked it so i haven't tested it just yet this is the first day technically of lightfall and i still haven't got off yet so i'm just testing my way around things but prismatic transfer when you cast your super each member of your fire team with a subclass damage type different than yours so imagine like a titan a titan a titan with a bubble cast his thing you would basically go ahead and pick up the the orbs the super would then be there bosh off you go and now you're gonna go and get a boost in it keep in mind you don't even have to apply this to armor you literally just click that's it and you've got it you've unlocked it so it's really useful for fire teams as well and you can synergize that with things like again like as i said radiant light and so forth and then you basically just want yeah, TLDR. I'd hopefully come towards the end of the build now. Thank you guys for being patient. And by the way, if you have enjoyed this, consider hitting the like button. I don't know if you guys like this kind of stuff or if you want me to shut up and just get to the point. Please let me know. Any feedback right now would be so goddamn helpful. Um, but yeah, the uh inside fire teams and, and raid teams right now, it's just way more efficient. So you're gonna end up ultimately buffing your damage indirectly because you've got a supreme well maker. Basic, supreme well maker font of might it's not as strong as what font of might used to be at least that's the whole idea of it because it does say small damage boost but you can basically see that indirectly it's boosted it otherwise there's no other way to go ahead and increase the damage from what i'm aware of and i have gone over all of the other mods that you can go and run in here and for me these seem somewhat the best in slots right now actually this mod system is really simplistic to understand so if you ever feel like oh my goodness i'm confused what to go ahead and do you can always go and pop by my twitch team as well twitch.tv for slash no sympathy i don't mind going over and having a little look at things and hopefully if you guys do like this stuff um i wouldn't mind uploading more builds but um i just want to say thank you guys for watching uh, thank you guys for hanging out i think i've covered absolutely everything if i haven't just leave a comment down below and hopefully i can go and catch up to you but yes starfire indirectly essentially got birthed birthed i said it again indirectly got buffed um, due to the weapon damage being added to the starfire again it doesn't have to be stasis in here you can run whatever it is that you want to so long as you change the surge at the bottom okay so if you've got a roar of the bear go ahead and put it on soda got the idea and you do get diminishing returns on these so it's better with just one but there's no harm in running another because there's not many other things that i would typically run in here and i don't really need stacks on stacks anyway so it's just good for environments and then what you can go and do save it inside your raid loadout and that right there is roughly how my build is looking so Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again in the next one. Consider hitting the like button. Consider sharing the build as well if you enjoyed it. Hopefully it really helped you guys. But thank you guys for helping me by checking out the video. I'll see you guys again later. Bye everybody.